Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to make a knife with both a textured blade and an etched logo. Now for this particular project we're making a cleaver for big dog arms. What I really wanted to do was take their logo and put it onto a blade that also had texture. Now I've never done this before, uh, so it was kind of a uh, a trial by error, you might say. Of course, etchings, uh, etched logos have to be done on a smooth, flat surface, and uh, the, the blade texture certainly isn't that. Anyway, I started with a, a stock blank, a cleaver blank, which is available from DIYEasyCrafts.com. And th these are a great place to start for a lot of these projects. Number one, cleavers are, are pretty easy to make. You don't have to have a bevel plunge cut. And they have a lot of surface area, which is great for uh, logos and metal etching. I started out just grinding the bevels. I'm, I am using a, uh, a bevel jig just to hold the angle. And I'm, be I'm beveling both sides. Once the bevels are done, step one is going to be uh, to actually etch the logo into the blade. Before I do that, I did um, drill a couple of additional holes uh, through the, um, the blank, and those will be for the brass bolsters. You notice when I'm, I'm drilling any holes through these big knives, uh, I use a, a vise, a drill press vise, but I also add an attachment to the top of it, a swing arm gate clamp which just secures that piece into the vise. So anyway, I, I took Big Dog's logo and I recreated it with nice, bold, black, clean, crisp lines. Um, and then I was able to import it directly into the Cameo Silhouette uh, software. This is the Kraft vinyl cutting machine that I have. And I reduced it in size appropriate for this particular blade. And then I output it and the machine actually cut out that stencil. I used a clear transparent uh, transfer film in order to place that onto the surface of the blade. I did prep that blade with uh, an alcohol wipe, cleaned it all up and degreased it. And my thought was to do the logo first, or the first part of the logo first, the main part. Uh, then I would do the blade texture and then I would send it out for heat treating. And then after heat treating, I'm going to do some additional etching so that the, the immediate background around the logo is not shiny. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. So with the stencil in place and the rest of the blade kind of blocked out, um, I'm using a 12 volt battery charger and some salt water. I have the positive attached to the blade and the negative attached uh, or clamped onto a wad of gauze. I dip that in the salt water. Uh, the charger is set at 2 amps. And then I basically just hold that in position for 10 to 15 seconds, and then I, I move it down and overlap. And really want to just cover the entire uh, logo 15 seconds at a time. You don't want to leave it on for too, too long. I'm always fearful that the, uh, the vinyl will overheat and lift. This is going to be a deep etch because I'm doing it before heat treating. So I do want to etch every part of that uh, stencil for a full minute. So 20, 20, 20 seconds a piece. You could go a little bit more than that if you wanted additional depth. But for most of these etchings that are done prior to heat treating, I really like it to be deep enough so that it stands up. So because you are going to have to polish off all the carbonization after heat treating. Anyway, when I finished the etching, I was happy with the logo and the depth of the logo. Now it was time to add that blade texture. Now the texture for this particular knife is going to be what I call thatched lines. And it starts with an angle grinder with a flap sanding wheel. Um, and I usually just, you know, very quickly uh, grind some some real coarse grooves and, and scratch marks into the surface. Uh, with this one, I have to be a little bit more careful uh, because I don't want to 
get too close to that logo and I don't want to you know scratch or damage that etched logo but I still want to end up with that real dynamic uh, thatched thatched lines very coarse very rustic looking uh, blade texture and I was I was actually kind of surprised at how easily it was to control this angle grinder uh, so that it didn't, uh, you know, grab and jump and leap forward or do any damage to that, to that logo at all. So the next step is I'm going to put a cutoff wheel into the same angle grinder. And this allows me to cut some nice, fairly deep straight lines or curved lines. These are going on top of those uh, deeper grooves or scratch marks made from the flap sanding wheel. It's just, you know, the particular look of, of this particular blade texture. But you could use this technique on, on a variety of different uh, blade textures. I, you know, I do hammer peened blades. I've done blades that are uh, fully etched with a pattern. So you can combine these different processes and, and end up with some pretty dynamic results. So that's the blade, you know, basically finished. It's got all of the uh, blade texture on it. It's got the logo etched onto it. Uh, the next step is going to be to uh, bring this over to heat treating. My friend Jason Northgard has a metalworking shop over in the North Shore. And he uses torches. He heats the blade up until it is uh, non-magnetic. And then quenches it in the oil. And this heat and the resulting carbonization of the blade really adds that nice black darkened effect inside each one of those grooves, into each one of those lines cut with the angle grinder. After heat treating, I take that blade and I put it in the kitchen oven 375 degrees for a total of three hours and then without opening the oven door, I let it cool off overnight. It's a tempering process. So the knife will be hard, uh, but it won't be brittle. After the heat treating, you do have to polish off some of that carbonization in order to expose the etching or the etched logo uh, that was concealed or underneath that carbonization. I use a 400 grit emery. You know, a little bit of elbow grease doesn't take all too too long. So here you have a nice, you know, blackened blade texture. Um, the logo looks really cool, um, except the background, immediate background right around the logo is also shiny. So the logo doesn't pop out as much as it could. It doesn't stand out as much as it could. I also went back to the belt sander with a fine grit uh, belt just to clean up uh, the bevels after he after heat treating. So actually, I was pretty happy with this. Um, in fact, I was going to leave it just like that. Um, I, I sat with it for a few days, and then I decided 
that it would look better if I darkened the background immediately around that logo. So when I went back to the Cameo software and I printed up just a black vinyl uh, cover that would cover every part of the logo, including the text. Using that clear transfer film, I was able to position that perfectly so that all the text was perfectly lined up. I wasn't covering up uh, any of the background that I wanted to etch. I was only covering up the logo. And once that was in, in place, just by hand, just went back and forth over the entire area, again, using that, uh, that car battery charger and the salt water etching process. Of course, this one is not going to be as deep. In fact, I only want to etch every area for maybe 10 to 20 seconds. And you can look at it. You know, you can just wipe it off very carefully and see how deep it's etched. You don't want it to be at the same depth of the lettering as the logo that you etched earlier. You just really want to make that background kind of coarse and, and rugged and kind of merge in with that with that textured blade. I'm just gonna peel off that vinyl just with my fingers, fingernail, and then I'll hit it one more time with a 400 grit emery. But now you can see that the logo really pops out uh, from a dark background. That is really the look that I was going for. So I was pretty happy with those results. Um, I'm not going to detail every aspect of this build here on this video, but I am going to add uh, scales or handles. I made these up from uh, red oak as well as walnut. I added brass bolsters that were pinned in place, peened. And then I drilled and pinned uh, the scales in place with quarter-inch brass uh, shafts. And actually, there's a whole, you know, little little technique to get your uh, your scales perfectly lined up with the bolsters so that there's no gaps or, or spaces in between the scales and the bolsters. And I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do a separate video detailing that. It's a very simple process, uh, but it has really worked out, uh, really worked out well for me since, uh, since Jay showed me that you know, just a few days ago. And once the two-part epoxy is dry, you can start to shape those handles. Um, you can use a belt sander to shape it. Um, I do a lot of the rough work on a belt sander. I also do a lot of uh, the shaping just with that with that angle grinder and a flap sanding wheel. 80 grit wheel it will remove a lot of material very very quickly so you have to be careful uh, but if you can control that angle grinder you can really get some nice results very very quickly. And after I get it rough shaped with the angle grinder, get as much of the of the heavy material removed as I want, get it to feel nice in, in the palm of my hand, and then I will go back and I'll I'll sand it smooth with an 80 grit, and I'll sand it smooth with a 220 grit. And the same time I'm doing the the scales, I'm also uh, polishing those brass bolsters.
So really, most times, that would be the end of a project, uh, or of my, my projects. I would polish the bolsters a little bit and the pins a little bit, and then basically I would finish it, be able to ship that item out. Um, on this one, I was really kind of happy with the way the logo came out on that blade, and I wanted to add just a little bit more detail to it. So I decided to go back and, and do an etching on the spine of the knife. I didn't want to do one of my standard spine etchings, so I came up with a, with a design that kind of mimics it. The logo for this one is Big Dog Arms. Um, so the spine etching mimics a dog chain. You'll see it, you'll see it in a minute. I went back, did the same etching process, uh, etched every spot of it for a deep etch for a full minute, 20 seconds at a time. peeling off all the vinyl. And between the big dog logo and this uh, chain or dog chain spine etching, uh, it's probably the best etched knife that I've ever made. Just some finished, finished photographs, finished product photographs. Please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other how-to videos and knife making videos. And I'll also put a link uh, on this site or right below this video uh, for Big Dog Arms, which is a uh, gun shop, an ammo shop, upstate New York. Thank you very much. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and certainly subscribe to this channel.